Good afternoon, Alex here for a Philosophical Monday from the Stockholm Bay Archipelago thing right in front of the King's Castle. Horses around the place and a very glary bright day, but hey, when it's sunny in Stockholm, it doesn't matter what the conditions are, you just want to get out there, do some work, do a blog. In fact, it's actually so hot I need to take this jacket off. Philosophical Monday, what are we going to talk about today? It's something that I've noticed in a lot of my students on the four-week natural program and the way that they kind of develop themselves and self-diagnose themselves and I, I wanted to relate to some of my guys is that the, the way they develop themselves and teach themselves and hold themselves accountable to getting better it's as though they're parenting, parent, parenting themselves in the worst possible way okay they're being the parent from hell unto themselves so imagine you know the way that you look at yourself the way that you look at yourself in field, the guy who's going out there picking up girls, the way that you develop that, it's kind of like the way you would develop a kid if you wanted him to be a sports star or an academic or a music star, okay? Somebody who, you know, a lot of controlling parents, they push their kids so fucking hard that the, the kid is basically emotionally abused. So when, when you're going out meeting girls, it is all well and good that you want to fast track your learning and uh, development and your results. But it's like you can only develop so fast and by forcing it so much, it takes a lot of the magic out of it. If the way that you parent yourself and your development in the game is really fucking intense, it's going to be all intensity and no reward. Okay, It's going to be all like you're basically going to put yourself through an emotional hell. And even if you do have some kind of positive outcome when it comes to meeting girls, picking up, getting action and meeting chicks, it's like you did it for the process not for the person that you want to meet or the magic of self-development. With childhood and with growing up, just the fact that you're going through life and you're having new experiences, it's fucking magic. It's unbelievable. It's the kind of those first new experiences that are one-off, irreplaceable things. But when you force yourself through it so hard and when you're that intense on yourself, my jacket's going to blow away, when you're that intense on yourself, you, take, you completely take the fun and the unpredictability and the magic out of it, okay? A lot of my students, the way that they would talk to themselves was as though they were a complete asshole parent speaking to a child. Like, that's not good enough, you're not, you're not good enough, you let yourself down, you need to be better, why did you forget that? And that kind of self-talk is completely destructive, okay? You can always, you know, in the way that you, you talk to yourself is the same way that you should speak to a kid. Be patient with yourself and give yourself space to grow. If you're like a hovering parent and overbearing and controlling on yourself, then that kid is that kid inside of you who wants to, who naturally, automatically would get better and grow and have fun and discover these things on his own. It takes the fun of the discovery out of it. And the best way to learn about other people and to learn about yourself and to have fun meeting girls is if it's a fun journey of discovery. So what you need to do when you're parenting yourself to being better with girls is you need to create situations where fun and magic can happen without forcing yourself into it and without having these insane, radical, uh, unrealistic expectations upon yourself which are only going to let yourself down and the little kid inside of you that you hope you know, the little kid inside of you it, it wants to grow and develop and get results to kind of satisfy the bigger picture satisfy the cognitive adult brain that you've got inside of you it gets it gets so fucking down and so out of state when you mismanage those expectations so you want to have more like a situation where you are creating the opportunities for the child inside and kind of setting it free to have fun and to, to discover on its own. You want to you put it among good peers and good mentors, you know, watching blogs like this and in good club environments, in exclusive clubs where it's a little harder to get in, but the people are higher quality, more forgiving and better socially. And only once in a while, only once in a while do you really want to come down hard on the inner kid and be like, stop being fucking lazy, stop being ungrateful, stop wasting these opportunities that you're being exposed to. But otherwise, you want to be very, <laughs> and I'm good for this, you want to be very heavy on the self-congratulations or congratulating the developing child on the inside. Okay, so 
all the time I'm saying to myself, good Alex, well done, good stuff. Well, isn't like, I'm talking to myself like a little kid. I'm like, that's awesome, like, well done. Like I talk to myself like I'm a little dog or something. I'm like, well done, wasn't that clever? Aren't you cool? <laughs> and why, I mean, why not? You're in the social world. You're allowed to talk to yourself in whatever way you want. You know, if you have your own kid, you can raise that kid however you like, okay, without abusing it. So, obviously, you know, you, you need to love yourself. If you did have your own child, or if you've had your own cat, dog, puppy, pet turtle, or whatever, it's an outlet to express yourself. And I don't know why, when we're developing ourselves in pickup and socially, do we fucking hate our inner child so badly that you basically, you retard it. You retard the growth and you suppress it. And the end result is you might get a kid, an inner kid who, when it finally does get results, resents the process, resents the journey, okay? Or, you know, you might overwhelm a kid so much. Sure, people, people taking photos of me. You might overwhelm that inner kid so much. <laughs> I'm famous. That they, that when it finally does develop, it like, it hates itself and it becomes like self-harming. And I've seen patterns, I'm getting people like gathering around me, taking little photos of me. When, so when you finally do make it, if you kind of rush yourself so fucking much, the end result may not have been worth the stress that you put yourself through. So I, one piece of advice that I got, which I relate to myself and now I want to relate to this blog, is that I can make life as easy for myself as I want or as hard for myself as I want. And I, I realized on this philo Philosophical Monday that I would get kind of the same journey and the same results, but I could make the easy, fun feeling way or the hard, difficult feeling way, okay? I could spin it in a positive way, like this is hard work, but fuck yeah, that's fun. Or it's like, I'm letting myself down, I'm playing catch up, I owe myself more, I owe myself others, I should be better than others. And I realized that I was doing exactly the same things that I could be doing positively, but instead I was like making it hard for myself and doing it negatively. So that, that soundbite, complicated philosophical stuff, that soundbite was that you can make it easy for yourself or you can make it hard for yourself. And I found that just by making it easy for myself, I would have a better work ethic. I'd want to do more. I'd want to discover more. I would be more pleasantly surprised by the unknown because more things would be popping up. So, metaphor philosophical metaphor. Imagine the way that you're developing yourself in the game is the same way that you would parent a smaller version of yourself. Give it love and patience and provide for it. Only occasionally yell at it and discipline it. I mean, don't you want the kid, you don't want the kid to get lazy or ungrateful, but all the time be encouraging and try to go on a journey with the kid together. Like acknowledge the new discoveries and acknowledge the things that are cool. I constantly see like uh, my, my parents, brothers and sisters and partners, they have nieces and nephews and it's so easy to make the journey of discovery and learning and new experiences so fun for little kids in such a simple, pure and innocent way that in this whole self-help, macho, alpha male, way of the superior man, pick up world that we live in, it just, it just gets completely sucked out of it. And hopefully when you're listening to my videos and seeing me as maybe one of the many mentors that you watch online is that I'm a, I'm a positive guy. I mean, look at my Instagram. I like looking at the positive, looking at the simple, looking at the, <laughs> the immature and the magical, right? I've got fucking photos of rainbows and shit on my Instagram. Why? Because I can, because it makes it easier for myself and why be negative where I can, when I can be positive. So that will help you to learn a lot faster instead of running yourself through the gauntlet, pressuring yourself, making it hard for yourself. There's nothing really that amicable about that. People aren't gonna think you're cool for it and you're gonna just carry around this feeling of stress and distress and you're certainly not gonna be any better with women because you're making it harder for yourself by being aggressive and ungrateful to yourself. So you get the message, I'm sure. Changing weather conditions, glary, sunny, shady, and uh, imagine that you're gonna be the parent that you wanna to be to yourself. Make sure you subscribe to this Alex Social video uh, YouTube channel, pretty awesome. New Philosophical Monday videos every Monday because I can develop them at a higher rate of speed. And check out some of the other programs that we have available to you as well. Namely, uh, Social Encrypted, which is the beginner level, hands-on 
video program that you can download and participate in for for uh, over there on socialencrypted.com. Cool, I had never had to actually deliver that on a blog before, but there you go. Alex from Alex Social, I will catch you later. First of all, I've got to say that, you know, obviously you need to be able to control your own emotions when you're going out in the social space in order to interact with other people. Okay, you've got to be on top of that shit. But of course, the emotions are an unpredictable, flighty, uh, you know, buzzing around type of thing that you can't control. Okay, it could be really good, it could be really bad. More often than not with guys, it gets into a kind of a dull, a negative, uh, kind of tantrum mode, which is annoying, okay? Thing is though, as a grown man, let me say this very fucking clearly, as a grown man, you can't let your emotions dictate your life, okay? You can't let your inner visceral urges dictate how you live your life. Otherwise, you're gonna go to jail or you're gonna be completely counterproductive and have no respect. Guys are ve you guys can be very, very good at allowing their mind to dictate their emotions, okay? that battle between mind and emotion, uh, guys, grown men, are very good at tolerating and being patient with and like charging through emotional problems and getting on top of it more so than children, sometimes women uh, or you know uneducated people, okay? So you've got to consider your own emotions like a diva, okay? Think of your head as like Simon Cow or the manager of a band of like the Spice Girls or one Direction or uh, Britney Spears or Miley Cyrus, someone like that, somebody who's a fucking diva, okay, Rihanna, uh, Mariah Carey springs to mind. And the diva 